I think out of my time on YouTube and the multiple years that I've been doing this on a regular basis, I've done only a few state of videos in which we talk about the state of a game in its entirety. And it's something that I think even most of those ended up being at the very end of the game. So sort of like a goodbye to video or something like that in which we take a retrospective look back at the entire year and see what went right, what went wrong, and where everybody else laid in between on their feelings, their opinions, and everything like that. Except, I think this might be the earliest ever that we've done one of these in terms of Call of Duty. So, that said, in this one today, I want to talk to you guys about the state of Call of Duty World War II. And it's something that it's going to be opinionated, it's going to be something you guys ha could have a different feeling, a different vibe, or thought process on, and that's totally cool. This is all one big giant discussion, which I totally want to get your feedback and your thoughts on all of this, and we can pretty much turn this into just a general sit-down conversation between us and the community that we've kind of built together. So, that said, in this one, we're talking different things about errors, frustrations, and other things like that and one thing that we found out about last night, supply drops a little bit further. So it's gonna be something that it might be more of just a straightforward commentary, not all that much b-roll pertaining to different portions like we do with tips, tricks, class setups, anything like that. It's gonna be more so just me talking one-on-one -on -one with you. So it's pretty much abundant that anywhere you go on any social media, you'll find some complaints in some way, shape, or form. It's almost impossible to find something that right now is more so positive than negative from feedback from the community. And that's something that while being a super positive person, somebody that just likes to go with the flow, it's kind of upsetting, but I totally understand it. Now, if you take a look at say Reddit, the entire subreddit for Call of Duty World War II, is entirely negative. Every single reply on Twitter to Sledgehammer or Call of Duty is negative. And it's something that once again, I wish it wasn't like this, but I totally get it. Between all the errors between disconnects, server issues, drop errors, challenge bugs, weapon and D-rank issues, it's been a hot mess in the past week and a half, and that's something that there's absolutely no way that you can deny there's been a lot of bad. While I'm more so one of those people that love to look towards the positive and say, you know what, maybe we can just power through this, we'll get past it and everything like this, and a couple months down the line will be something we can laugh about it and everything like that, but at this point in time, it's still so much, unfortunately, that is overbearing and overwhelming to the point where this might go down as one of the worst, if not the worst, launch in history. And that's once again something that I hate saying, being somebody that is usually so overly positive. And I get it, it's a tough thing to deal with with these sort of things in real time. These guys are absolutely working their tails off trying to correct the numerous errors. And I've said it before and I'll say it again, I can't fathom how much goes into this. Me personally, I have absolutely no qualification to say, you know what, we should totally do this right this way and this another way. I have no qualification and a lot of other people don't as well too. And one thing that I've usually defended for these sorts of errors and everything like this is that QA departments or quality assurance, for those of you guys that don't know what that is in the video game, industry. It's literally a designated team that sits and plays the game for hours on end, trying to test everything in what would be a real life environment, something that they can give direct feedback to the developers so that they can get these sort of errors ironed out and everything like that before it goes live to the public. And obviously something like this is a very daunting task before release because there is so much that you have to test in order to make sure it's all perfect before you push out. If it's something like DLC, it's a lot easier because it's a more confined build and something in which the new concept that needs to be tested is on a much more micro scale and a lot less of it compared to what is a full launch game version. But that said, a QA department only runs a few dozen people deep, so there's nothing that can really compare between a QA test like that and the real life testing that happens as soon as servers and the game goes live for millions of people across various different platforms at launch. And I totally get that there will be problems. And again, I don't wanna rag on the team because I know some of these people. They're great dudes and care about the community and their craft. And it's one of those things that they're just caught in the crossfire of something that went wrong and they're trying to correct it. But at the same point in time, it's still a massive bummer. To me, I think what we have on our hands right now is potentially the best game in terms of era, weaponry, feel, and pace since Black Ops 2. Now, obviously that's something that, that's a bold statement for the state of the game right now. Of course, with how much there is wrong with the game, that is something that it's almost an insult to Black Ops 2 if I compare it, but I think the potential is there. I think that I haven't had this much fun truthfully, and this is even between all the errors and everything like that. Though they get frustrating in time, whenever I first jumped on the game, and surprisingly if you had the game early, it actually wasn't half bad. All these server issues and everything like that, the disconnects, they weren't there, 
And I don't mean for that to sound almost condescending or like, hey man, look at me. But it's one of those things that I had the game about a day early and I got to play for quite a bit of time. And it was honestly some of the most fun that I've had since Black Ops 2. And even through all of these issues and everything like that, I still have this urge where I'm away from my desk and I'm like, you know what, dude, I could totally go home and I could totally love the idea of playing World of War 2. Now, of course, sometimes I get home and it doesn't allow me to and I have some issues there, but just that grind mentality that I've had as of recently hasn't been there since Black Ops 2. And funnily enough, the two, compare because Black Ops 2 is probably my favorite Call of Duty to date. So I feel like we've had a ton of potential in this game that hopefully doesn't get wasted because of these errors. And that's one of those things that also comes down to the player base. A lot of people are getting scared off by this or their patience is wearing thin to the point where they don't want to come back and give much attention to this if it's not fixed in a timely manner. A week and a half, let's be honest, for some server issues and everything like that isn't quite to the level, but it's something that my mind immediately jumps to some No Man's Sky stuff where the launch was just so problematic that people started to go away from it. And that's really what is upsetting to me I think, from somebody that just loves and cares about the community of Call of Duty, is that a lot of people are making their first return since whatever game it may be, maybe since Ghosts, Black Ops 2, something like that where they just hated the Jetpack era Call of Duty stuff, and that's something that tons of people were stoked on this game leading up to it. I said it before, and I'll say it again, is that probably about the beta up until the launch of the game, I hadn't seen that many people stoked on Call of Duty in years. So to see all these people getting hyped on the game and everything like that, and then only coming to this as the final product, it's upsetting and I really hope that people can stick with it because I think there is that potential, but I also understand why people wouldn't want to stick around. To be met with server issues, disconnects, drop errors, challenge bugs, weapon and D-rank issues, all for the first time coming back to a franchise after a few years, that's totally understandable why you'd be frustrated and maybe not even come back, why you'd say return the game or something like that, or why it's something in which you just lose faith in a series that you hope will bring you back into it. And of course, it does kind of sound like a little bit too optimistic here amidst all these issues, and that's just how I am. I want to look at the bright side, but again, it's one of those things where it's hard to at times like this. But I will say the one thing that I will commend Activision and Sledgehammer for is something that we found out about last night. While it's kind of an unpopular opinion, I guess I could say that they're giving continual status updates on everything, I think that is good. There still, again, is a little bit of a lack of communication between the primary developers and the voice of the development studios and everything like that. But while there is maybe that lack thereof and not exactly the information that people want to hear, one thing that I think we can take away that is nice is that the planned release of supply drops was supposed to be today, something in which would have really upset a lot of people. Now, while it's something that once again might be an unpopular opinion, I think that this is a good thing because these sorts of things are contractually agreed upon by Sony and PlayStation, as well as Call of Duty and Activision months before release. So these sorts of things were already set in place way before we ever would have known about these sort of issues. But it's one of those things that's in order to kind of make a situation a little bit better or remedy it in the ways that are possible, this would never have gone over well with the community if we ended up getting COD points dropping today, people having the ability to buy supply drops, feed into that microtransaction model, and not being able to play the base game. That's something that would have never gone over well. But this sort of thing, despite business models that once again were probably premeditated by months, this was then pushed back in order to prioritize the fixing of the core mechanics and the core playing of the game. So. I think that's at least a sign of good faith. Maybe you guys may disagree and that's totally cool, but at least me trying to find the positives in this sort of sea of negative, that's one of those things that stands out to me. Now, of course, at the rate things are going, we have no idea if one week will be enough. And if that one week comes and we're still getting those issues, well, hopefully that's not the case because that just looks incredibly bad for the development process, for the game itself, and for the outcome and the outlook of the game in the future. But if it comes to that point in time, who knows if it'll be delayed again. 
So that said, they kind of bought themselves some time, but hopefully that's enough to actually become effective. But that said, that is kind of where we're at right now. Server disconnects, matches lost and challenge and order progression lost because of games disconnecting from the host. Peer-to-peer -peer servers, which I can't even begin to fathom how many people that say dedicated servers or a hybrid system is not what we have, we're still on peer-to-peer. -peer. This is truly peer-to-peer -peer, and it's something that is awful. We haven't seen it in a couple of years, strictly as peer-to-peer, -peer, but those preconceived notions that COD in recent years doesn't use a hybrid or dedicated servers to host their games, well, this should turn your mind around. But nonetheless, peer-to-peer -peer servers, drop bugs, weapon and D-rank issues, all these sorts of things are where we're at right now, a week and a half into Call of Duty World War II. So while once again, I'm a very optimistic person with these sort of things, it is getting increasingly frustrating for even me, who I think is one of the most tolerable people in the community for these sorts of things. And of course, to somebody that is an average consumer or somebody that is a little bit less tolerant of this, I totally understand the frustration. And while I do hope that you guys stick around to maybe press on and maybe we can see a potential that maybe this lives up to a Black Ops 2 level caliber of game, we just need to see it through. I understand where some people may not give it that time of day. But that said, that's where we're gonna wrap it up. I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback. Feel free to drop me your thoughts, whatever it may be down there in the comment section down below. Are you guys a little more tolerable like me and you're trying to see the bright and the positive out of all of this? Or do you guys absolutely think this might be the worst launch in Call of Duty history? Of course, the future, who knows what it holds, hopefully better things, but for right now, it is absolutely no denying that this past week and a half, has been in probably the best way possible, incredibly frustrating to deal with. So hopefully you guys enjoy the video, hopefully you guys enjoy this discussion, and once again, feel free to let me know what your thoughts are down there in the comment section down below. If you guys enjoy the video, make sure you drop a like down below, and of course, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe as well to stay up to date with everything we have here regarding Call of Duty World War II. We're gonna be keeping you guys up to date with everything you need to know in terms of game updates, tips, tricks, best class setups, all sorts of things like that. If any of it interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you do not miss a single thing. And finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube. I practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. But all that said and out of the way, hope you guys have a fantastic day. Thank you so much for watching. Here's the hoping that things get better in the next coming days to weeks within Call of Duty World War II, and we have a smooth sailing ship from here on out. But hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Espresso. I'll see you guys later. Take care and peace.